Hi, good morning everybody here in the room. I am Mikaela. I use she, her Ella pronouns. I am a Wikimedian in residence at the Perez Art Museum in Miami, Florida. I am also uh, one of three leadership advisors for art and feminism, but I'm here today on my from my capacity as a Wikimedian in residence. Um, and I'm happy to be here. This is my first time at the Wiki Conference North America. So um, a bunch of fans I usually see on the square of the Zoom uh, for the past, I don't know how many years now, so it's just wonderful. And also because, you know, I was here with Giovanna who taught me actually to edit on Wiki maybe five years ago in Brazil, where I'm origin originally from. And Jake who was on board with me pretty much taught me how to be uh, a Wikimedia in residence a couple of years ago. So I started my job at FAM uh, in January 2023. FAM is just as, you know, let's see if this works. That's, you know, now I'm going to prove my technology skills. Okay, here I am. So FAM is this wonderful, wonderful place um, at the intersection of the global south and the global north um, in Miami. I am lucky enough to go there every once in a while, even though I'm not based in South Florida. Yes, yes. Should I? Does it? I can try to hide. That's the yeah. I wish I could. Can I do something about that? Can is that a way for me to make it go away? Or more. Hi. There you go, friends. This is lovely. Now you guys know that I can't do Zoom properly. <laughs> been I've been doing this for like many, yeah, many years. So yes, yeah, so going back to film, I'm just gonna do a brief in you know overview about the museum. If you ever find yourself in Miami, please go there. It's just this amazing place on earth. Um, and they do collect uh, contemporary and modern art, which means that we're highly focused on 20 and 21st century uh, contemporary artworks and artists. Most of them, you know, living artists walking among us. So it's just fantastic. And when I got the job, um, I said, hey, I have a job, you know, what can I do? And I think a question I had back then, and I still have, it's about how can we actually open up the opportunities for digital engagement, knowing that the museum is focused on uh, the experience, the US Latin experience, Caribbean and African diaspora in the US and abroad. So it's a truly global uh, collection. And again, contemporary art museums, uh, we can, as you great Wikipedians might know, we have some challenges with licensing. So this will be a pretty much, you know, a, a cry is because case study and a reflection point about the other ways we found to put information online because we can't really do imagery, not all of it. So here we go again. And, you know, as you see, if you attended one of the several talks about, you know, the role and the involvement of Wikimedians in residence this week, we had plenty, which is wonderful. I think Jake is just like the great responsible for uh, doing that. And, you know, you probably heard from everybody that the museum staff is our co-conspirators. And I'm going to tell you that I'm lucky enough <laughs> to be under a new department in the museum called Digital Engagement. And we do various things there. And we have this like incredible expertise. There's, look, I'm under Jay Molika, who is our leader, a uh, fantastic visionaire. He's a technologist, and there's Lauren who takes ownership of FAM TV, which is a video art uh, streaming platform. And we can also talk about archiving video art, which is a, something that as we comedians, we should be thinking about. Um, we have Nati thinking about content development for the internet. There's Danny and Pat and that analysis. So you can see I'm really well served in this department. Um, and it's a very interdisciplinary program, and we do collaborate with every single department in the museum. And as you can imagine, you know, we run public programming, original publications, uh, all the screenings of PAM TV. Please sign up, it's PAM.TV, <laughs> it's free, and you will find a bunch of digital artworks there. 
And I also, you know, added a lot from Pam TV because we host film festivals from all over, especially from Latin America and the Caribbean. So it's just really thinking about representing communities. They're not often, not just included in art museums, historic, art historical point of views, but also, you know, Wikimedia projects overall. And, you know, I think something I should say is just about the PAM location. Again, I think I was just talking a bit before, but knowing that PAM is a bilingual museum. So Miami has three official languages, which is Spanish, Haitian Creole, and English. And I'm putting English at last because it's really, if you go there, it's just really the last language you might hear from people when you're walking across the street. Um, so we at PAM, we actually do that. So thinking about educating and bringing all, all, uh, the, the official languages of the city into Wikimedia, and also because they are also PAM's official languages. And if you go to PAM TV, you see there's like subtitles for all the three official languages. You can, you know, watch in every single language you, you find that you, you must, you know, are used to it. So, okay. I, just selling the museum a lot for you, but I think when I talk about it, just what makes the program so unique here, in my understanding, honestly, it's about our work in media literacy. There's a lot of text in here, there's just 10 bullet points just to prove to you that we. I wanna talk about the, the work that we've been doing the past 20, 22 months, I guess, uh, since we started in January, which is heavily focused on educational offerings. When I was, you know, brought into PAM to conduct and establish this, uh, it's a it's an institutional wide project. Uh, we I couldn't find a wiki user group in Miami or Florida at all, so I was pretty much alone. <laughs> and also, something you should know about me: just my background is art history and museum work. So wiki came much later, and I my entry point to Wikimedia projects was through art and feminism. I was a volunteer, then the original organizer. Now I'm doing something else, but you know, I, I, I keep learning. So it's just, just a huge, immense learning curve for me as well. So I think here we found that for the Miami community, we had to talk to them and make them aware about what the things we can do, the amazing things we can do in the Wikimedia movement. So there's a lot of professional development for staff it's an ongoing um, info sessions for the local community. I talked to, you know, academic professors. I thought I trained with Wikipedia workshops for cultural organizations, employees for not just small organizations, but major institutions there. Public programming, of course, for the museum audience. Um, curatorial, I keep getting curatorial input. Everything I do, uh, there's the librarian coming in, curatorial. Uh, collections, everybody's just so involved in this project that I just, you know, I can't, you know, stress that enough. Um, enough, of course, the artists, and I think, you know, I'm the lucky one who get to talk to them sometimes and say, hey, there's this gap in your biography in our TMS or whatever digital, you know, platforms we use, TMS, that's <laughs> like high laughs from the crowd because it is, you know, a chapter. So, uh, we keep, you know, talking to them and updating and making sure that they are being, uh, we are doing justice to their biographies and uh, professionalism and experiences, amazing achievements, because these are, you know, incredible artists, award winners and uh, fantastic folks. So, and now uh, there's a big project with the team. So Pam uh, is uh, very invested in the Miami-Dade public schools. So they do have a teacher's council, the PAM Teen Arts Council. So since last year, when I got in, I've been organizing projects with the teens and their favorite educators. So they get to invite who they want to be in the room. Um, and it has been, the, the response is amazing. So there's one, I want just an I going a tangent off, there's a math teacher that keeps coming to the art events because this guy is the favorite teacher of at least five teens. So he knows everything now about Wikipedia. He knows about the collection, about Caribbean women, women artists, just the, the favorite dude of all, all of us now. So I do think that the gem of the project is the media literacy and the informational uh, program that we run there. Uh, 
because it's just critical also to the, you know, the, I don't want to say the social climate that we live now, uh, not only in the US, but all over. So I do feel that this is uh, the most important. And I just going a bit, you know, in detail about the public programs, it's just, you know, you can see this was the first um, just for academic community and professors, scholars uh, in Miami. Then we did um, the educator plus team workshop, another one this year, plus educators. As you can see, uh, we do it through art and feminism. And I'll, I'm on a pause here to talk about the why, you know, the why we do it through this framework. Um, not only because I think it's just this amazing window to look at the Wikimedia movement, understanding, looking at the gender gap, which is based, backed by research, but also because in museum history, there's also this divide. So the gap exists. So I think it's actually, you know, a shared, unfortunately, a shared reality within the Wiki movement and museum, uh, the museum field. So I am a museum professional, I went to museum school and, I know about that, and there's also research to back this up. So I think it was aligned with also with Pam, and Pam respects often feminism to you know be part of this work. And I am very lucky, honestly, that I get to do what I think is important, knowing that this is important for Pam as well for the Wikimedia movement. So I'm actually I couldn't be you know if you can see I have a very cool job, <laughs> um, and at the time you know that I got the position. I was working for a different institution. So this was just, you know, something I, so this is one of the, the amazing events we did. This was last year. As you can see, Jake is right here. Uh, he is the, if you know him, he's just a, this omnipresent guy that is all over all the events. So, and I can talk more later about the gender gap and thinking about the PAM collection and what we've been doing in terms of you know, uplifting the stories and even thinking about collection, collecting uh, practices within the museum and how amazingly weak media programs, they can actually help museums to think about those issues as well. I'm just gonna jump into the findings. Um, and this is actually an ongoing, um, I, we're still finding things and thinking about ways of tackling those issues. So something um, I think was also mentioned previously in one of the several talks I attended this week about the role of course citations and sources. So at some point we found, knowing that film collects the US Latino experience, Caribbean, African diaspora in the US, these are not mainstream uh, historical topics. These are also sidelined topics and people sidelined by traditional uh, historical discourse. So it's very challenging to find reliable sources and citations as we like them <laughs> within our you know schools around. So something we've been thinking and all my tutors not just in English, but I've been saying Spanish, Haitian, Creole mainly, um, and records of other collecting institutions really, because sometimes, you know, things that Pam collected in the 1980s, they were being collected, they they were collected mainly by a couple of other museums. Maybe you know the Moma in New York, maybe SF Moma in San Francisco, but not not even then. So what we're now thinking after we re realize that uh, some we have some outliers, they are only FM, even though they're major, you know, they're amazing names in South Florida. FM has a whole collection based in South Florida about and for the community. So we are thinking now and doing, actually acting on is just uh, commissioning essays, interviews, things that we can provide to scholars, graduate students, so they can make sense that Miami-Dade Public Library, they're such wonderful partners. And how can we make sense of this? So we can create the sources, so we can feed Wikipedia with this knowledge. And that will benefit everybody. I don't, don't have to go into this because that's actually, it's going to be good, you know? And knowing that, you know, film curators, of course they can do, they're kind of busy people. So, and it will possibly pose a conflict of interest. We can also talk about conflict. Um, I've been flagged a few times just, you know, because I know some of the artists now because I have this job and this was also a challenge. And I think it is a, a full disclosure. It, it is a challenge for Wikimedia in, in residence 
um, and I had lots of help within the community to how to navigate that, and I'm thankful. So, and this is something that Pam can't help me because I, I am the Wikimedia voice within the institution. So if I face challenges, I'm kind of lonely. So thank you all guys. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and again, thinking about the sources in many languages, you know, and more, more than creating the, the, the reference point and the materials is just creating an infrastructure that will help other institutions like ours to do that kind of work. Because we want to do just kind of best practices sort of thing. It's just creating the guidelines of other folks. They can actually think about other ways and ad of adapting and using the, the materials. And that's pretty much it. This is actually in the making. So you'll be hearing more about this in the next, you know, years or so. And of course, there's impact. Um, this is like the current stage of the, the dashboard. And we do measure uh, through the dashboard. But we also do uh, more in a quantity other way. So thinking about evaluation, uh, taking a very holistic approach to a very museum-like approach to evaluation. As, as you can see, the Commons uploads, they are pretty low for the Wikimedian, you know, as you can imagine. But I'm not gonna go on the lows because as you can imagine for a contemporary art museum, it's just an idea that it's actually, we are at a stage that I'm just happy of having the face shots of artists um, at this point. So we are heavily focused on, you know, for instance, Madeleine, who's now just the superstar filmmaker, just around Toronto Film Festival, Sundance, Khan, and she is just, and everybody's just, hey, using this picture. So this was a major achievement. This was last year. This was just Madeleine posing to the camera, she sent me the picture. Uh, Antonio Ryan, who's just this force of nature in South Florida and, you know, amazing, amazing activist and visual artist. And of course, we deal with writing papers for uh, articles and papers, academic journals, so we can highlight us with other communities. Also, of course, thinking about topics in South Florida and global movements in us, they are not being really uh, included in the Wikimedia in ways that we would expect. So there are a few ways that we can measure success. And of course, the several teams programs that we run there. So impact is just kind of something that, you know, ways of measuring and what what's the success, what's, what do we feel like, you know, what are the goals, I guess? It's just, yes, having lots of preferences and words and images, but not only. And I guess, you know, knowing that, oh, I have two, two clocks, guys. One just saying 23 and then 1028. So I'm rushing, but I realize that it's actually 23. <laughs> so, okay, we have a minute. So a few takeaways right now and what is going to come up next. So I think, you know, it's just consequential to have a Wikimedia in residence uh, and trying not just to defend my job, but I really believe that. Having a Wikimedia is consequential to a museum, especially in a contemporary art setting. If there's any contemporary art people in the audience, yes. So it's really something that you can really broaden it for fam, it's just really broadening the horizon of what American art is. That's just my view, and that's what I truly believe, because I know they are doing that already. But being able to outreach and talk about it in a very global way, that's amazing. And that's something that, you know, even though they have a incredible breadth of, you know, public programs and contemporary art exhibitions, they can't really do it the way we do it. So I really, I really believe that. And of course, the metrics and stats, as the stats of that Wikimedia tools they can provide is just wonderful. Even though they can also do it, we have a data analyst in the house, which is also uncommon uh, and unheard of from our museum perspective. But we do have Pat, which is a brilliant, um, Friend and also embedding the stats of what we do into the other stats and kind of showcasing into the museum like the importance of this work and how we do with this like together. And I guess for the horizon, I'm just gonna focus on the teams because um, it's a collaboration that I'm doing with the the ed education department and they come up with the week committees. They already have the Teen Arts Council, but for this year and the next one. We are coming up with a whole, not just one lesson plan, but a, a curriculum 
that we just onboard the teens again. And there's every year there's a cohort uh, of teens that they come to the museum uh, and they learn various skills, professional development, art making, etc. But this year we have the it's just launching the wiki committee, um, and they will be responsible for, you know, they're taking ownership honestly of this project. So they are picking select they're selecting a book artists in their collection, and we're going into the field doing research with them, uh, interviewing, uh, elaborating interview questions, essays, they are talking with scholars, so they will be actually creating materials, and there's a whole infrastructure on how to develop content with them, uh, with, of course, with help of amazing staff we have, but knowing that we have a page for them, the museum blog, so they will, be, they will run a magazine, basically. So this is a very ambitious project, and really hopeful uh, of this uh, being like the one of many so they can continue the work because as you can imagine I can do everything so it's amazing that we have them and thinking about them as the new voices in Wikipedia and the hopes that Miami at some point will have a user group that is just coming off from the film p -tax. and yeah so I think I'm just gonna stop here and because I've been talking a lot so Thank you, everybody. Muito obrigada. And again, I'm Micaela. I'm happy to answer questions, chats, comments. Um, as you can see, I wasn't really going into the wiki and with data commons because it's something you guys know, you know? And I thought, you know, okay, I don't need to talk about more of the same. You know probably better than I do. You can do with data better than, than me, but anyway. So, yeah, thank you. <laughs> Any comments? We still have three minutes. Yes. Yeah, we're really glad that uh, that you are doing the work there, reaching out to local communities, and uh, and you know making it trilingually, uh, which is great. And uh, yeah, presenting to do the help from other parts of North America, help from Miami, South Florida, Florida groups. Thank you, Richard. Yes, most probably. Yes, I need help. <laughs> um, yeah, great. Yeah. We need to be about that. Yes, and they are they are champions, you know, and they want to see this develop they they want to see it grow and they have the hope and they they are the ones they are the glue they're sticking everyone together really you know outreaching to other institutions making sure that we have those meetings yeah i again i couldn't you know thank them enough you talked a lot about the challenges of engaging and retaining young people and you're on the ground working with the team I'm curious, one, what are the main like obstacles and misunderstandings that you come up against and how, how do you navigate those? And then also, do you think that like working with teams at scale you, through Wikimedia's in residence could be like a really strong solution to our issue now, or do you think it needs to be complementary to a whole bunch of other things? That's such a good question. And that's very true, you know, working with them and meeting meeting them where they are. And for instance, knowing that thinking, and I engage with, you know, in academic institutions as well, like a bit young, older, you know, college age students. And the difference with the teens is just that they are, you know, they're still natives, they truly are. And they, they understand pretty easily, you know, what you're doing and how they like to find information in one place, even though they know that they, they're, they're so savvy, you know, it's easy for them to navigate multiple roads, but they find that the sources is just kind of obvious. It seems like an obvious to them and they are curious. They like to learn the tools. There's no uh, actual boundary for them. You know, other things they can't learn. The, what I've been finding, there's no, you know, the, it's a source that never uh, dries. So, and I think the thing with that, they, I suggested the favorite teachers for all these programs, we train them, you know, just in the educational setting, in the museum, the, the education lab. But when you do the public programs that invite the educators, the strategy of just bringing the ones they like is just that enhance their learning completely. You know, they bring just the engaged teachers. So, and those teachers, they come up and they get accelerated by the, the amount of, you know, knowledge the teens are get, gathering and they bring back to the schools. And then the next meeting, there's another teacher. And, there's, and the, the teacher's call is actually expanding because of the teens. So I think it's a matter of giving them the ownership, not treating them as just empty vessels, right? 
uh, which usually are yeah, like we think they don't know anything, but they actually do a lot, especially in the Florida. They inform me so much, you know, they are my newspaper. But every time I get there, I, <laughs> they, I know about everything, you know, what building went down, what air is gentrifying, what's happening in the local politics, everything, you know, what college is just closing, the funding, everything. They know everything. What museums I should go, exhibitions I should see. So they know a lot So because they're so well informed. So I think it's just a matter of meeting them where they are and grabbing the cool teachers. And there's always, the teachers are fantastic overall, but they tend to be so, so, you know, busy. And there's so much that goes on their shoulders. So I think thinking about that is just a way of thinking the new generations. Thank you very much, Michaela. Thank you, guys.